Brian Childry with Go Engineer. We're going to go ahead and get started here with our SOLIDWORKS What's New 2016 webinar. A couple new things for 2016. I'm assuming if you guys are listening to this webinar, you are probably either already switched over to 2016 or you're strongly considering switching over. A couple of the reasons you might switch over, obviously there's always some new features, just like there's with every rollout. I think some of the ones in 2016 are really useful, so we'll kind of dive into that here in a little bit and go into some detail on some of them I think are really, really important. Though if you have switched to Windows 10 operating system, that's another reason you might consider switching to SOLIDWORKS 2016. 2016 is designed to work with Windows 10 seamlessly. Also 2016 is designed to work with 4 and 5K resolution monitors. Basically what they've done is they've changed the way the graphics work a little bit. So now if you have one of these really high resolution monitors, you can work in SOLIDWORKS and your, uh, your icons aren't extremely tiny up in the corner. They actually scale correctly. Everything should work just fine for you. So anyway, those are some of the reasons to switch to 2016. Let's go into some of the new things that, that you're going to see for your SOLIDWORKS. Uh, one of the new things is SOLIDWORKS PDM. Uh, if people aren't running a PDM system, you need to strongly consider it. Helps for file references, making sure things don't get overwritten, things like that. Before 2016, we basically had workgroup PDM and then enterprise PDM. There's been some rebranding and some changing going on right into that. So workgroup PDM, the end of life for, is 2017. So you have one more year if you're on workgroup to integrate and change over to the PDM standard, which is going to be the new lower level of the PDM systems that you're going to want to use. Enterprise PDM, it's the same product, but it's being rebranded as PDM Professional. PDM standard, what I really like about this, before now, workgroup PDM and enterprise PDM, the idea was that they would do the same thing, but they function in two totally different ways on two totally different systems. It made integrating from workgroup PDM into enterprise PDM difficult, kind of cumbersome. Now the PDM standard is basically a, a stripped down version of enterprise PDM. It, it functions the same way. It's got the same basic system, it's SQL based. So it works in basically the same way, except it is meant for kind of a, a single site location. And who's it for? Anybody implementing from Workgroup PDM and wants to change over, that's, you know, it's perfect for them. Single site SOLIDWORKS users. So if your business is located in one location, it's perfect for you. If you have a multiple, uh, multiple location business, you're going to want to look at Enterprise PDM. And if you only need to really manage SOLIDWORKS files, that's when, that's when PDM standard really makes sense. What's cool about PDM standard is you are basically getting a single location version of enterprise PDM and you are getting it free with your SOLIDWORKS professional and SOLIDWORKS premium licenses. So if you have SOLIDWORKS professional or premium licenses, you're going to have PDM standard. If you don't and you want to get PDM standard, it's a good time to upgrade. Another tool that's really cool, it's called SOLIDWORKS Visualize. This is a very high quality photo rendering software. Before now, it was called Bunk Speed. You can see the little watch that we're looking at here. That is not an actual photo, that's just a rendering. So it works really, really well. It's a standalone product, so your SOLIDWORKS users don't have to be the ones using Visualize. It can be used by your marketing team. Visualize is going to come in two packages. There's gonna be a standard and a professional level. The cool thing is the standard version of it is going to come with your pro and premium SOLIDWORKS license. Here's just a couple of quick renderings I, I picked out that these were done with the software. Bentley uses this, obviously a very high quality rendering. Some interior designers use this. Nissan uses this as well. And you can see from the quality in the photos, it, it's a very powerful tool. We're excited to have that. We're excited to offer that. Hopefully we'll have some more information for you on that soon. The big push for SOLIDWORKS had for 2016 was focusing on design. On your left, you see you'll have SOLIDWORKS 2015, the version that you're probably familiar with, and then on the right is 2016. First off, we're going to watch a little video. This is a case study that SOLIDWORKS did, and, and they did the exact same operation in 2015 and 2016, and they mapped the mouse movements required to do it. 2015, this is probably what you're used to seeing. A bunch of mouse movements back and forth to the uh, design tree, back to the um, design window, scrambling around all over the place. So. It's, it works, it's what we're all used to, it's what we've been doing for years, but it is a little messy when you look at it. New for 2016, we have a couple new features that we're gonna show, but essentially they've designed this in such a way that you don't really have to even go to the design tree to do anything. All the commands you normally go to the design tree to access, you can get from the design window now very quickly and it's not complicated at all, it's very simple to use. But obviously in this case study, cut down the time quite a bit, a little bit more than half, so cool feature. So let's let's go ahead and take a look at some SOLIDWORKS stuff here. Okay, so if you're new to 2016, if you haven't seen this before at all, the first thing you're thinking is this is different looking. 
very bright. It's very clean. There's not much color to it. There's been some feedback on that. I'm sure SolidWorks is taking it under advisement, but in reality, this is what it looks like in 2016. I have been working in 2016 for a couple of months now, and I honestly, I prefer it over 2015. Now, every time I work in 2015, I kind of wish it looked a little more like 2016, but one of the main reasons they did this, things are a lot cleaner to look at. There's a lot less clutter to some of the different options. And this also, this helps people who are colorblind. These are high contrast icons and logos, whereas before before they were all color-based. If they're color-based and you're colorblind, it's kind of tricky. One of the things I wasn't really happy about is just the sheer amount of white. Everything is very, very bright. SolidWorks was smart enough to give us a couple little tricks here. So I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna go into, click on my little drop down here and go to options. In my system options, I'm gonna go to color, select that. And I have this new selection here. It's called interface brightness. Fit the drop down. I've got three options here. So the light is the default. There's a medium and a dark. I think the dark is too dark. So I run the medium, but I'll show you what that does. It just kind of gives a little bit of darkness to the border around the outside just to maybe not beat you down so much with, with how bright it is. So I'm going to zoom in here on the part here. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the face on this, this assembly here. I'm going to click on this. Now you see on the right here, you've got your normal shortcut menu that comes up. We've all seen this before. It has a couple new buttons. You can learn more about those and play with those, but you got a new window that popped up in this top left corner here. This right here is called your breadcrumbs. Let me just do that one more time. So if I select on the face, the face stays highlighted. This shows me literally everything that this face has anything to do with. So I can highlight the face itself. I can highlight the loft, the feature that generated the face, as well as the sketches that drive that feature. I can look at the body and I can look at the part. I can look at all the mates that relate to that part and how that part is located with those. And I can modify those from here or I can look at the whole assembly itself. So if I want to look at, let's say there's something about this part I want to change. If I click on it, instead of jumping into the design tree, I can click on it, go uh, part level, click on this, and I can go right here. I can open that part directly from the assembly window. I can go in here and I can um, look at the mates. Maybe I don't like the way something's mated and I want to change it. And I can do that right from here. But you notice if I click here and I go back here and I click here and I go back here, I still have quite a bit of mouse travel. So there's a new shortcut key in 2016. So if I click on the face here, that window still pops up in the top left, but as soon as I hit the D key on the keyboard, it comes straight to my mouse. So right here, I've got all the parts right directly next to my mouse cursor. So if I hit D again, they go back to the corner, hit it again, they come back to my mouse. Really handy feature, just minimizes travel in the mouse. So if I hit the D, I can you know go right to the mates. When this comes in real handy is let's say you're zoomed in on a part and you've got to adjust this face you know, in particular. I can hit D and come right here versus zooming out, scrolling over, trying to dig for whatever I'm looking for. I can stay highlighted on the face I want to modify and get to it straight from there. So that's a really cool new feature that they've got in 2016. There's one more use that we're going to show on that D key, and I'll show you that here in a second. Next thing let's talk about is the section view. Function's basically the same, but before to modify, adjust the plane that the section view is using, you had that little triad. And it was all right, but if you had a really complicated part, it was sometimes kind of hard to manipulate and use. The new one here uses these big orange curves and lines. So it's much easier to see what you're doing. So you can grab them and tilt the section view around or stretch it out um, and do whatever you need to do to manipulate it. Cool feature I like about that. Let me show you what I, what I mean with the, uh, with the D key here. So if I do a section view on this half, let's say I would like where that is. If I hit the D key, the confirmation corner comes to my mouse right there. So instead of me having to travel all the way up here to get to it again, I can just hit it and it's right there. So there's my section view. So that D key, I think is gonna be a huge time saver for people who are you know, in SolidWorks eight hours a day. I think you're gonna really, really learn to love that little uh, shortcut. So let's look, looking at this assembly here. I can see I've got a problem here. This button, something changed maybe, I'm not really sure. Something with my design got changed though. And this, this part is no longer sitting where it needs to. It's actually uh, conflicting in a lot of different areas. Before this would be kind of a hassle because the button is actually inside the assembly, this, this uh, black button here. And so getting to the mates would be kind of a hassle and to be a little bit of effort. But new in 2016, if I click the face here, click the D key, I can look at the mates it has right here and say, well, which one of these is, is driving this? Which one's causing this issue? I'm pretty sure it's this one here where it mates there. So if I click that, I can go straight up here and edit that mate. To so these faces, I'm just gonna clear those out because I think something's wrong with those. Here's the new thing in 2016. So if I come in here and I hover, there's a little flat piece on this button. I'm gonna click on that face. And as soon as I do, you notice that button is now transparent. I can look through that button and select other things behind the button, where normally this would be a very difficult thing to get to. With this new transparency, as soon as I've clicked on a face for that part, it goes transparent. So I can go directly here and click on this face. Yes, that's where I want those to mate. 
and just like that I fixed that part I think that's a really cool feature to be able to you know make it a little bit quicker for you to to make these changes so again I'll hit my little D shortcut get to my little confirmation corner say yep so I'm happy with that turn off my uh, section view and now my button um, on this little uh, device here is, looks correct so other part I want to show you here all right so what we have here is a little sketch uh, no features yet just just the sketch line you've probably seen this before this is probably going to be a spring of some kind if I go into this I look at my um, swept feature so I'm gonna click that you've used this before most of the time I don't know maybe 80% of the time whenever you're doing a swept feature you're probably doing a circular profile used to be you'd have to put a plane on there sketch your circular profile or whatever profile you want to use and then select the sketch you want it to follow and that's how you create it took a bunch of extra steps creating planes creating sketches new for 2016 however is we have this little circular profile option this is really cool so I'm gonna click this and now it brought up a little diameter button I'm gonna change that to one millimeter and then on this little box here all I'm gonna pick for the uh, path is this sketch here this 3d sketch and just like that I've got my circular profile created I didn't need to draw any planes on the end I didn't need to actually sketch a circle I could just decide what diameter I want to do the nice thing is also now I can go in here look at this feature here edit this I can go right here I can go oh maybe I want to make that two or three or, or, or whatever and it's it's a lot faster than it used to be for you one of the other nice things is the sweep feature no longer absorbs the sketches that made it up so once I have this feature made if I need to change something about these sketches I could go straight into these sketches edit those again and make whatever changes I need to without having to recreate the sweep so okay. let's look at some weldments here SolidWorks is uh, a couple things their, their naming convention um, for all the structural members was really kind of ambiguous they've cleaned that up though it's a lot nicer so you can look at the structural members that are already in this uh, this assembly here tube square and then dimensions, um, two rectangular dimensions. So you don't have to guess what it is that you're trying to find over here in the design tree. It gives you a more useful name that you can uh, select from. So let's get into going ahead and making some. So we've got this uh, little bus shelter curved uh, lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and make those into some structural members. So I'll go ahead and same as always, go to my weldments, hit structural members for the size. So this is new for 2016. Whenever I put down like a, a drop down for my sizes, it's actually going to sort them correctly. If you've ever ran into this, you know that in 2015 and previous versions, it's sorted by the first number first, regardless of how large that number is. So for example, right now on, on my little drop down, I have 50, 60, 70, and 120 on the, on the left. What it used to do is it would put that 120 at the top because the first number is a one. Yes, technically it's sorting numerically, but not in the way that humans would understand it. But they have fixed that now. So now it sorts 50, 60, 70, 120. So one of the other cool things they do is your two most recent sizes this recently used this top one here you see that little line at the top there your two most recently used sizes will get stored at the top for easier access i've only got one at the top obviously when i created this i only had the one i'll go ahead and click on that i like that one pick my sketches here okay i'm happy let's click that one and that one all right so good enough worked pretty well it's pretty easy to do let's uh Let's do a couple, another cool little feature here. So if you haven't used this tool before in assemblies, if you hold down the tab key, you can hide individual components. So you can get kind of a clear view of what's going on. That functionality has now been transferred into weldments. So if I hold tab on my keyboard down and I don't click any buttons or anything, I just drag my mouse over the different members, they, uh, they hide. Um, now I didn't delete them or suppress them I just hid them so if I want to bring them back I hold shift tab and just move my mouse back over wherever they were and they return to the screen for me so real quick little feature just hold tab drag over hold shift tab drag back and the part comes back so so end caps let's see that here so I'm sure if, you, if you've used weldments you use end caps at some point so I'm gonna click this face here I've got the uh, options I had before I could have a end cap that goes external like this I could have one that sits inside flush or I could have one that sits inside but it's offset now I can actually change that offset I can have that thing recess farther into the part if I want so that's a cool little feature I can um, manipulate it that way let's go ahead and drop that in there and just take a look at this so if I do a 
got a couple of views here let's look at this one so I have a section view saved for this part here so I've got this uh, this is the end cap I just created here if I click on this end cap you notice I get some dimensions that pop up here I've got a width here and a distance here I can now directly edit those whereas before that wasn't really an option do a quick little rebuild I can modify the the uh, positioning of this end, uh, end cap just directly from the from the end cap itself instead of having to go into the feature and change it again so that one's pretty cool this is a new I'm kind of giving you a little sneak peek preview here new for 2016 uh, training and events yeah web training we have this new tab called go universe this is a this is a totally new thing that uh, go engineer has been building um, so let's go ahead and go to this and this takes you to this go you teachables now this is free online learning content that anybody has access to you can enroll now right now i'm going to log into this under my own account here so you guys can see what what we're looking at here uh, right now for feature courses we've got the what's new in solidworks 2016. i just barely touched on some of the some of the things here but if we go into this the people here at go engineer the technical team we have created videos covering basically every aspect of 2016 of the the main new new areas so you can go in here look at these are professionally created videos with examples showing the 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 new the new stuff in 2016 being used so if you haven't if you don't know much about treehouse here's a great way to learn if you don't know much about the new photo view um, the new proof sheet system is awesome so if you ever use photo view and you're trying to get lighting and shading right the illumination proof sheet is a huge huge help and huge time saver Learn about MBD model-based definition. That's the that's the new thing that we're all going to be doing here soon. A lot of great content on here, and, and we just barely launched this this year, so it's 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 fairly new. Works really well. We're going to have a lot more content on here. SolidWorks PDM Standard. This is going to be a great tool for people trying to use SolidWorks PDM Standard and trying to figure out how it works. Tutorials, explanations of how to migrate data over, everything. Super useful with that. And we have our Go Automate product. That was created in-house here at Go Engineer. Go Automate product, if you have repetitious tasks that you, you have to do over and over, if you're not using this, you need to contact us about this and see, see if we can make this uh, work for you. I encourage you to check out this site, check out the other videos. You know, there's lots of stuff I didn't have time to touch on. Go through here, see what's useful to you. Call our tech support team if you have questions. We're happy to help. Mm -hmm.